What's going on, everybody? My name is Ben, and welcome back to another episode here on the VJVE Group Build. We're moving right along today, guys, with our G55 Series 0, and I'm really hoping today to get this thing ready for next episode, where I intend on painting all the colors here on the aircraft. Now, we do have to do a couple of extra steps here, like the landing gears. We have to assemble all of those, but we can't put them in quite yet until after we paint the gray on the bottom of the fuselage, so that's going to be a little troublesome. We also have to work on the front nose cone and the propellers and all that. A little bit of hand painting. Nothing too serious on that. I did a little bit of work off camera and I installed a rear tail mast that I can go ahead and string a line here from the aerial all the way to the back tail. We have to work on that. And also we have to do a little bit of work here on the bottom of the radiator. We have to get that flap and the X bracings installed so we have a little bit of extra detail. Other than that, I think we're looking actually pretty decent. Of course, we're going to go ahead and try today to get all the little fidgety parts on in preparation for paint. Now, we're going to go ahead and start here with the flap on the back of the radiator. I think that's going to be a great place to start because then I can go ahead and attach those X braces and glue everything in place. To make the X braces, we're going to be using just a basic strip of styrene that I stretched, nothing too fancy, and I'm going to go ahead and cut those at a 45 degree angle. And that's going to then be glued down to the inside of that flap and then crisscrossed towards the top of the connection point. I think that's going to be a really nice look for it. That's what it shows in the reference. So I think we'll be okay. Now, the flap itself doesn't really fit all that well. If you open it to a very extreme position, then it stays just fine. But I don't want to open that much. In fact, I want to go ahead and bring it in a little bit so it's a bit more parallel with the rest of the aircraft. Unfortunately, that makes the rear flap not fit at all. But I think once we install the braces, it'll stay in place. I've actually taken two strips of styrene right here. We're going to cut them at a 45 degree angle, drop a little bit of glue on the inside of that flap, and then we're going to glue it down, and then we'll glue the next one down. I really want to make sure that these stay put. I don't want to, you know, move the aircraft and knock them out, because once I get this in there, it's going to be very difficult to go ahead and put them back. So I want to make sure that they stay put. With one brace on, we're going to go ahead and install the other brace. I'm going to do the exact same thing, glue it down to the opposite side, attach them in the center. We're going to make it a little bit higher where they cross, and then we'll end up trimming them off, and I think that'll work just fine. A little bit of, uh, to me, an extra thin cement on each side, of course, and then on the middle of the connection point. Let that dry, and I think we have ourselves a flap with some bracing on it. Of course, we have to let this part dry a little bit, so while this is drying, we're going to go ahead and move over and start installing all the little bits and pieces and get this thing ready for pre-shade. That's the goal. Let's do it. everybody we are back we have all the little bits and pieces installed including the mast the tail mast all the internal bracings there on that flap for the radiator and so now we're going to shift over and we're going to start to install at least temporarily the front propeller nose cone now the back part of the nose cone itself i'm just going to wedge that in to where it's supposed to go luckily for me this fits perfectly then i want to go ahead and take the nose of this and attach it to the front 
because everything here is going to be that olive green color. And I want to make sure I can kind of blend everything together and I don't have something standing out. So I want it all to kind of be uniform. I'm going to take a little bit of Elmer's white school glue. This stuff is really, really handy to have because, well, it's not permanent. I'm going to go ahead and take some stretch sprue. I'm going to dip it into that top of that Elmer's glue. And I'm just going to get a little bit here on the point of it. Then I'll take that nose cone and I'm going to go ahead and just dab a little bit here on each of the connection points. All right, there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue this down temporarily to that back spinner plate. But I'm not going to line them up as it's supposed to be because there are little areas here that are supposed to be that interior green. So I'm actually going to rotate it a little bit so I block those areas off. That means that when I go ahead and paint that, if any paint goes inside, I'm not going to lose that cool interior green color. That's going to be maintained. At least, well, that's the hope. Now, as you saw, we assembled the air intake during our time lapse, and we now have to go ahead and make sure that there aren't any seams, and we have to kind of taper in and fare in that back part of it, because there's a little bit of a misalignment back here, so I want to make sure that that is all nicely sanded down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of super glue. We're just going to run it along that line. Then once that dries, we can come back, sand it down, and we should have a really nice looking air intake. Now, when that dries, we're also going to go ahead and start cleaning up the pitot tube here. I really want to make sure that this looks good. We want to go ahead and take off any of, you know, sprues or any sort of misalignment, sand it all down, file it, get it ready, and then I'm going to install it into the wing of the airplane. I might have to go ahead and bore out a little bit more of the opening there on the end of the wing. That's okay. Shouldn't be anything too difficult to do. I've got my pin vices, or if nothing else, just an X-Acto knife, and I can just auger that out just a little bit. Once this is ready, I can install it, and then I'll have most of all the parts here attached to the aircraft. Then installing it into the front of the leading edge here on the wing. Just make sure it's nice and level. Make sure it's parallel with the rest of the aircraft. Oh yeah, looks good. Now back on to the air intake. I want to go ahead and open up the front area there and make sure it's as round as I can get it. I'm going to use my X-Acto knife. I'm also going to take some jeweler files. Really kind of round it out. Make sure that it looks thin. It looks like it's supposed to. Now I think on some of the other aircraft like the 202 and the 205, there's actually like a butterfly valve in the very front of that. I don't know if the G55 has the same butterfly valve, so I'm going to have to go ahead and look around and do some more research on that. But if it does, it shouldn't be that hard to do. I can punch it out using like a punch or something, slip it in there and glue it in place. But right now, I'm not going to worry about that. We're just going to auger it out, sand it down, smooth out the seams, and I think we'll be really ready to go. Quick shot of sandpaper right here. We're going to sand down the last little bit here, kind of polish out the plastic. And I think then we'll be able to go ahead and test fit this against the side of the aircraft. So now we're going to go ahead and test fit this and make sure that it fits. And already I can tell we're going to have to do a little bit of work. It doesn't actually sit flat there on the side of the cowling. So we're going to have to go ahead and add just a little bit of plastic card. I think if we go ahead and just glue something down on the inside, we'll have a nice flat surface. We can go ahead and mate it up there right up against that cowling and I think we'll be in good position. So let me go ahead and grab some plastic card. Let's get a little piece there. All right, we have a little piece of styrene nicely glued down. I'm going to cut it with my flush cuts, make sure that we have a nice even cut. Then I can take my jeweler files and some sandpaper and just fair it all down. Make sure that everything lines up nicely with the actual kit part. I think this is going to be perfect. Then when I get this all nicely sanded down and ready to go, tapered and all that, we can then test fit it again to the side of the aircraft, and I'm pretty sure this is going to work. After just a quick test fit, I can already tell you it works perfectly. I'm really glad that I added that little bit of extra styrene. Now that we have it on here, we can go ahead and drop a little bit more Tamiya Extra Thin, make sure that's not going to go anywhere. And I think that looks pretty cool. Yeah, I like it. So now with that on, we are pretty much ready to go ahead and start some pre-shading. We're going to start on the bottom of the aircraft first. I'm going to go ahead and use some of our tried and true NATO Black by Tamiya. I'm going to go ahead and give it about a two to one ratio, one part paint to two parts rubbing alcohol, 70% isopropyl, very common mixture that I like to do. We're going to load up into my airbrush and then we're just going to go ahead and trace all the panel lines and give it that really cool pre-shade effect. So let's go ahead and jump into that time lapse, push this thing one step closer to being finished. <music>
All right, everybody, we are back. And as you can see, we have a pre-shaded G55. I think this looks pretty neat. You know, I went ahead and traced all the panel lines with that NATO black. I've got all the detail in the back there, which you can see. I have all the little parts and pieces like the antennas and the masts, though they're all glued on. Everything looks to be pretty decent shape. The front nose cone, of course, is not entirely permanently glued on, but I did tack it in with some white school glue. So we are looking good for next episode where we can come on back and we can start painting. Now, in terms of paint, I've got some neutral gray that I thought might work well for the bottom section of that. Not really sure if that's going to work, but I'm going to try it out. And for the top section, I'm going to be using some Mr. Color, Dark Olive Green. That's going to be used for the top, for the sides, and of course, for the nose cone as well. So I think that's going to be really, really sweet. Then, of course, I can go ahead and come in and I can start doing some post shade. I've got this Vallejo Olive that looks pretty neat. It's very similar, a little bit lighter, so that might work out. I don't really know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and try out a couple of things and see what I can do. But anyway, guys, let's go ahead and call it quits for today. Thank you so much for watching. You know the drill. Go out there, get yourself some bench time, have some fun, build something cool, and we'll see you back here on the next episode of the VJVE Group Build, hosted by Hobby Link International. Thanks so much, everybody. We'll see you next time. Thank you.